So guys, the Department of Education, um, Elaine van der Merwe, who is a good friend of mine as well, we have decided to look at the graphs of grade 11. You know, the line, the parabola, the hyperbola, the exponential graph. Not only because that is important to know, to pass mathematics, but should you decide to go and study further, these concepts are very, very important. And I don't know if your school has started with calculus yet unfortunately my school has not I am I am in Goodwood we have not started yet but when one goes to calculus you need to understand these concepts there as well and even it goes it flows over to the second paper to paper two when you do the three graphs some of these concepts they are very 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 important so I know it has been said that tutors sometimes speak too fast so I will try to um, slow myself down um, so that you guys can have the opportunity to, to listen and to understand. Unfortunately, um, I don't have the option to answer your personal questions now, but I'm just going to explain as best as I can. So the first thing, grade 12s, I would like to do is just to help you to understand when it is which graph. You know, sometimes the question paper is kind, and then when they ask you to sketch the thing, they actually say, you know, sketch the, let's say, the parabola. But most of the times they are not. So, away from my face, I hope you guys can see over here, I'm going to write down y equals x squared and I'm going to write down y equals 2 to the power x and I'm, I'm going to write down y equals x over 2 and then I also would like to write down y equals 2 over x. Now I hope you guys can see that. Now this is not going to be very mathematical but it's like a recipe. You know when you when you bake something, when you make a cake or you bake fed cook, sorry, um, and, the, and, and the recipe says, you know, two cups of, of flour, you don't question that, you just do it. So this is like a recipe almost. If you see a square, can you see the square there? It's a parabola. So you can have a lot of stuff here as well, but if you see a square, it's a parabola. If you see the exponent is an unknown like that. You can have a little tail here and some more stuff over here, but let's just be very simple now. If you see an, an unknown over there as the exponent, then it's the exponential graph. Now that's a tough one to sketch. So if you see to the power two, it's a parabola. Now I, I don't want you to be bored and say, but we know these things. I know you know these things. I know that's why you are in grade 12. You guys are clever, but let's just pretend you don't and do all the basics, okay? So if you see to the power two, it's a parabola, and then there are certain things you have to do. If you see to the power x, to the power unknown, it's an exponential graph. Now that's a tough one to sketch. If you see the x like that, with an, a constant over here, or you can also have I don't want to say equals, if you can have maybe a constant over there next to, then it's the line. And then if you have the unknown below the constant, like that, then it's a hyperbola. So can we just say that again? If you say, if you see, sorry, to the power two, it's a parabola. If you see to the power x, now you can have little things there, you can have stuff there and stuff there, but don't worry about that now. If you see to the power x, it's an exponential graph. If you see the um, constant next to, remember over two is, is the same as a half, you know, then it's a line, the one that we started to sketch in grade nine, and then the one with, that we started to sketch in grade 10 and then continued in grade 11, but they keep on asking this, is when it's the constant over the unknown, like that, and then, it's the hyperbola. Okay, so now we are going to start with the parabola. 
So I don't know if you guys are just sitting there or if you are working with me. I hope you are working with me and not watching a show. So I hope you guys can see that. So, you know, when when we do the graphs, doesn't matter which graph it is, then there are various things that they require from us. They want us to sketch it. And we're very happy when they ask that because normally that is the easiest. They might give us the sketch, you know, with some information and then ask us to get the equation from that, which we will, of course, do. And then when we have the sketch, which we have done, or the sketch that they have given us, they always, always, always ask us a lot of questions on that, seeing if we are able to interpret the sketch that we have done. Then we have to look at things such as domain and range and a lot of other things. But I always say to my own learners at my school, you know, one step at a time, one step at a time. So hopefully I will be able to work with you guys on Thursday. Um, today, in the two hours, I would like us to learn again. I know you guys can do this, but pretend you can't and just work with me. Today, I want to go through how to sketch these things and how to get the equation. Then Thursday, we will have the sketches. Then we will answer all those tough questions, you know, where is this larger than that? Or where is it this above that? Or where is this equal to that? And, and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that you guys will join me again on Thursday. Now let's look at the parabola. The first equation that I've written down there, I hope you guys can see that. I'm going to just rewrite it again. Y equals X squared minus 10x plus 24. Oh, yes, the Lord, the Lord has blessed me with the ability to teach mathematics, but not blessed me with the ability to write very neatly, unfortunately. So I'm just moving it down so you guys can see there. So I keep on saying, let's do the parabola. How do we know this is a parabola? Remember what I said when we started? If you see a square, now we know it's a parabola. So it's going to look something like that, or it's going to look something like that, one of the two. So how do we know? Well, I hope you remember from grade 10 that it all depends on that sign there, which we call A, if we write it in the standard form. You remember the standard form, I hope? I'm just going to write it again, AX squared plus BX plus C. And we all say that is the standard form of a parabola. Now, the sign of that thing determines whether this thing has a, a maximum value, a largest value, which people call a frown, or whether it has a minimum value, a smallest value, which people call a smile. Can you see this goes larger, 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 largest, and then it goes down again. And then this one goes smaller, 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 smallest. That's minimum. And then it goes up again. So remembering from grade um, 10, I hope, and from grade 11, I'm just going to write it again. I hope you guys can see that. And just excuse my handwriting, please. I'm the old school type. I like to write and not use these PowerPoints because I want you to see what I'm doing. We know from the sign over there that this thing is going to smile. So this is not the correct sketch. I'm just going to write, a, make a sketch, a wrong one. Let's say like that. What do you need to give to get full marks for this sketch? You have to give the coordinates of the X intercepts. You have to give the coordinates of the y-intercept. And you have to give the coordinates of the turning point. You know, smaller, 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 smallest, and then it goes up again. So those are the things that we have to give. So when I teach this in grade 11, 
for the first time, then I always sort of force them to use specific steps. So I'm going to go by going the X intercepts. Now, when you're writing your grade 12 finals, you won't have time for all this fancy stuff, but this is just for now. Now, the X intercepts, we are talking about these points that are on this line. And hopefully you remember from grade 10, maybe even before that, that on the X line, Y is zero. On the Y line, X is zero. I use about 10 minutes in my classes to let them repeat after me, and I really go like this. Who is not on the X line? They go Y. Who is not on the Y line? They go X. X is not where? On the Y line. Y is not where? On the X line. Okay. So if we are on the X line now, the X intercepts, then Y must be naught. So Y must be zero. Can you see? Y must be zero. So now you have a choice. Either you can use your calculator and that nice formula you have on the formula sheet, or you can factorize to get the two X values. Now this one factorizes easily, which is why I'm just going to factorize it quickly. Um, X minus six, X minus four, like that. And then from that, I get X is six or X is four. Now, that means that the X intercepts would be six, semicolon zero. And the other one would be four, semicolon zero. OK, so that's out of the way. The second thing we have to get to sketch a parabola, any parabola, is where does it go through the Y line? Now, on the Y axis, the Y intercept, we snort now. Now X is zero. Now I'm not going to bore people that are in grade 12 already by showing you all of this, because you guys are too clever. That's why you are in grade 12. If you make Y zero, I'm sure you can see that, then that falls away. That falls away because it's 10 or minus 10 times zero. So the only thing you're left with is 24. So I'm not going to say the Y intercept is 24. Remember, it's on this line. So X is zero and Y is 24. So I just want to move over to a new page quickly and put on the um, two axes what I have so far. So I have a four and a six. I hope you guys can see that. Four, zero, let me just write that, six, zero. And it smiles, so it goes like that. It doesn't have to be neat, it has to be correct. And this point I have just calculated, let me just get it again, 0 and 24. So to get full marks, the only thing that you still need to get is the turning point. Now, it's we say turning point, which means it has an X and a Y value. Now, if you guys have done calculus already, and I will be very jealous if you have, because we have not even started that. If you have done calculus already, then you can use the first derivative to get the X value over here. But let's say you are now in my own school and we haven't done calculus yet, then we have two remaining things left with which we can get the turning point. Yes, two. So in total, we have three methods that we can use to get the turning point. The one will be calculus. So I'm not going to look at that because most of us have not done that. The second one is a formula that they give you, minus b over 2a. But the one that I think is best, because it's easier, is to use the analytical geometry Now, you know that this thing has a very nice shape. And there's a nice word for that as well. It's called symmetry. That means that there's a line of symmetry that goes right through here in the middle. 
absolutely in the middle. Which means that this x value over here, this x value over here must be right in the middle of 4 and 6. In the middle. Now you can already see it, but let's pretend you can't. Remember that midpoint formula in analytical where you go x1 plus x2 over 2? Yeah, you remember that, I hope? Well, in that case, you can go 4 plus 6 over 2, which is now 10 over 2, which is 5. See how easy that is. So you guys can decide whether you want to use this little formula or whether you want to use that or use calculus as soon as you've done the first derivative in calculus. So, okay, so it's 5. So we put the 5 in there. Now we still need to get the y value. Now hopefully you guys are working with calculators. I hope you do. I'm not going to show you how to use calculators because you guys being young and fresh are much better with calculators and technology than us old people. But what it comes down to is you take the 5, follow my hand, you put the 5 in there and in there, and then you get the y value from it. So let's just do it once. Let's pretend I'm working with a calculator. So we go 5 squared minus 10, 5 plus 24. And you see what I'm doing? I'm putting the 5 into the original formula. So that's 25. That's negative 50. That's 24. So I have 49 over here. If I take the positives, I hope I'm correct because uh, I'm trying to work without a calculator, so that's minus 1, if I'm correct. Yeah, so minus 1. Now, listen carefully, please, I, because I say this to my own grade 12 all the time. Whether you decide to show all the steps or not depends on what you want from mathematics. If you just want to pass mathematics well and get on with your life, then you don't show any of these steps. You do everything on your calculator and you sketch the graph and you get maybe four out of five for that. But if you want to get full marks for the graph, then you will have to, I'm just going to put this page back, then you will have to show how you get the x-intercepts, you know, either by doing factors or by using the quadratic formula and then the y-intercept is obvious. And then the turning point is obvious. So I'm mainly referring to getting the x-intercepts. Now, I've given my grade 12 the choice. If you want a very good mark in grade 12, then you must fight for every single mark you can and then show all these steps, either the factorizing, you know, or using the quadratic formula, which will then give you the same. If you just want to pass well and get on with your life, then just do everything in your calculator. Show the graph, you know, and get maybe four out of five for that. Now, we will have to do another one and another one and another one. So we have now done that one. So let's now look at this one quickly. I'm just going to rewrite it. And I'm writing it plus 2x plus 15. Right. Can you see? I hope you guys can see there. Um, because of this, I know it's going to look like that. It has a maximum value. Now, I know teachers um, and me, me also, we talk about frown and smile. But that makes the understanding of mathematics um, a bit weaker because sometimes they ask, um, they never ask, is the parabola frowning? They go, so what is the maximum value? So let's rather say it has a maximum value, you know, a largest value, and then it falls back again. So it's going to look like that. So what do we need? We need to get the x-intercepts. So that means we must make y zero. Like that. Now you can 
factorize again. I know most people hate factorizing and they use the quadratic formula or uh, the minority. Few people like the factorizing. So I'm just going to multiply everything by negative one because I am too stupid to factorize a thing like this with a negative in front. I don't like that. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative one, like a magic trick. And then it looks like that. Which is okay, but just remember that you are sketching this one, not this one. So let's just factorize. Remember now whether it lies like, just look at my hand, whether it lies like that, or whether it lies like that, it is going to have the same x-intercepts. That's why I can do this. So I am going to go, this one can't factorize. Yeah, I can. x minus 5x plus 3. It can factorize. So we have 5 semicolon 0. And we have negative 3 semicolon 0 from that. So we have, I hope you guys can see there, we have the minus 3, 0, which is the one x-intercept, and the other one, 5, semicolon, 0. Now, we don't have time to be neat. Uh, time is limited, you know, when you write exams and people start walking up and down, they start telling you you only have 30 minutes left and your stress levels go up and so on. Okay, so we have that. So we have the x-intercepts. Now we must get the y-intercept. Now remember, we're not sketching this one. We're sketching that one. Don't make that mistake. We're sketching that one. So always, when you're doing the final calculations, the y-intercept, the turning point, it's the original, the original, the original. So make x zero, so x in there. I mean zero in there, that falls away. Zero in there, that falls away. 15. Ah. So the y-intercept then is 0 and 15, which is around about the 0, 15. So we're going to have a thing that looks more or less like that. Like that. And we still need to get the turning point. Now I'm going to go a little bit faster now because there's a lot I still have to do. So the best way I believe to get the x value is to use the analytical formula. So x1, x2. I hope you guys can see. So minus 3, that's x1. 5, that's x2 over 2. Now, me being old, I always try to work without a calculator to keep my brain going. So minus 3 and 5, that's 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. Yes, so we have a 1 in there. So now to get the y over there, we need to put the 1 back, not in here, but in the original. So we must put the 1 back in there. So... You guys are going to work with a calculator. I work without it to keep my brain going. Let's see what this becomes. That's 15. I hope you guys can see there. That's 2. I know my handwriting is pathetic. That's minus 1. So it's 17. Take away 1. That's 16. Yay. 16. And there we have it. Full marks. Full marks if you show the steps over here. Four out of five, maybe three out of five, depending on the uh, memo, if you don't show this. But three out of five, still very good. So now, because I think I'm going too slow, I am going to skip that one, and I'm going to look at that one now. Is it a parabola? Is it a parabola? Well, why is it a parabola? Because we have two to the power two. I have had learners in the past <clears throat> that sketch the line for every single thing. Doesn't matter what they say, they sketch a line. But you guys are going to be too good for that. You're going to say, I see a square a to the power 2, so I know that's a parabola. So just give me five seconds to rewrite that, please. 
and I am going to write it again and hopefully move it down so you guys can see. So that's a parabola. Now, I don't know if you were taught in grade 11, and I'm sure you were, but you might have forgotten because we're living in a weird, weird year. So I have a, a, a quite a good grade 12 class. Um, they, they're second best in the school, so they, they're quite good. But it might be a name that I made up myself, but it works wonderful. Turning point form. And, and why do we call it like that? Because if you, if you have it in that form, then you can see the turning point. Now, here comes the recipe. Here is the recipe. Turning point. It's a recipe. So no mathematics involved. I hope you guys can see my hand. So what do I have to put in the place of X to make this zero? I want that to be zero. Don't ask me why now. There's no time for that. It's a recipe. It's like two cups of flour or three eggs when you buy when you bake something, you know? You just do it. So what do we put in there to make this zero? Of course it must be one. That's how this recipe works. Now if you make that one, then this is zero, then all of that is zero. The only thing that survives is the minus eight. Can you see that? Let me write another one for you. So let's say it looks like that now. Sorry, squared. It's a parabola. So what is the turning point? Well, this is the question you ask yourself. What must I put in there to make this fall away? What must I put in there to make this go away? What must I put in there to make this become zero? So I have a positive three. I must put in a negative three. It's a recipe, eh? This is not really mathematics. So we put in negative three there. Then that's zero. Then all of this is zero. And then the only thing that survives is the six. That's how easily you can get the turning point from that. Then you don't have to use that minus b over 2a formula or the x1 plus x2 over 2 from the analytical or the calculus of the first derivative when you guys finally do calculus. Okay, so let me just go back to that one on a new page. If you can just give me 10 seconds, please. Maybe less. And I'll just make sure you guys can see that. So there we have the parabola and we have to sketch that. I keep on saying parabola. How do we know that? Because of the square. So we look at the sign. We can see it smiles. Sorry, let me be mathematical. It has a minimum value. So we need to get the x intercepts. We have to get the y intercept. And we have to get the turning point. Now, the turning point we can do first, because it's so easy. What must I put in there to make this go away? One. And if all of this falls away, what survives? Minus eight. So I have a parabola that has a minimum value that smiles, and the turning point is one and minus eight. Let's now get the y-intercept, because that's also very easy to get. On the y line, who is naught again? X is naught. So now you guys are very clever. Let's do this without a calculator. Do it in your head. We put zero in there. That means that's a way. That's gone. So we have minus one squared. So minus one times minus one is one. Times two, two. Minus eight, minus six. Let's just check that again. So we know to do the y-intercept, we must make x naught. So x naught in there, so that's gone. So negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1, that's positive 1, times 2, that's positive 2, minus 8, that's minus 6. So we have the y-intercept. 
Now we need the x-intercepts, and there we know we must make y naught. So now it looks like that. So now you have two options. If you like to torture yourself, <laughs> then you multiply all of that out, and you get a trinomial, and then you multiply the two in, then you add the minus 8 to it, and then you will have a parabola in the standard form, you know, in that ax squared plus bx plus c form. Then you have to factorize it again. But if you are clever, and I'm sure you guys are, you can do it easier than this, much easier. So if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to write the zero on the other side. You know, in our language, whatever you write, is it whether it's English or Afrikaans, or is it Kosa, we read from left to right. But in mathematics, which is a language, by the way, we can read from left to right or right to left. It makes no difference. So we can um, write it like that. See how easy it is now. I am going to go minus 8. Over you go. The opposite of times 2 is divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now I have to get rid of that, and we know that is square root. But don't forget, I'm sure you know why. So it goes like that. And the only thing we still have to get rid of is the minus 1. So 1 goes over like that. And let's see what we have. So the 1x will be 1 plus that answer, which is 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3. Remember now the square root of 4 is 2, so we know that. So 1 plus 2 is 3, and the other one will be 1 minus 2. That's minus 1. Yeah, nice. So now we can sketch this thing. I'm going to make it small. Hopefully you guys can see over here. So we have a minus 1. And we have a 3. And it is smiling, we said. Why do I put the arrows on it? Because it doesn't stop there. Eh? It continues forever. And then the turning point which you have is 1 minus 8. And then the y-intercept that we had was 0 and minus 6. And there we have it. It's full marks. Full marks for that. And I have been busy now for half an hour, which I think is okay. So let's do one more like that, if you don't mind. Y equals, and I hope you guys are working with me. No, I'm not following the notes that were given to you, because I want you to do some homework on your own and go through that on your own time. I'm using my own notes. So, I'm hoping that you are not just sitting at a chair. Yes? Can you perhaps just give the learners then time to write it down? Because I think they are waiting for you to use the, uh, the notes to practice. Okay, we are, we are not going to use the notes. And so I hope you guys are not sitting at on at chairs only and you have to work on your lap, but you, that you are actually working at tables or at desks. Good. I, you must just give... Give them some time to write down. Okay, okay. so please, I I was just told that I must go slower a little bit and give you guys time to write that down. And so try, please write that down. Yeah, let them try it now on their own because I think they are just watching you and waiting for you to use the notes. Okay. And I am not going to use the notes, guys. A little bit down because if at the right top line is not visual for us. You must just bring your paper down. Thank you. There we are. Okay. So I was just told by the Department of Education that you guys might be waiting for me to do the notes, which I'm not going to do. I'm using my own notes. And so I'm asking you guys to write that down. So I'm going to ask you to get the turning point first. 
Now, the turning point counts two marks, and so you can't use more than two minutes on that. We always say more or less one minute on mark. It's not totally true, but more or less, just to give you an idea. So if a question counts five marks, then you shouldn't take more than six minutes or seven minutes on it. So write down the turning point from that, please. So I have no idea because I can't see you guys. It's like I'm talking to myself, except that I have the voice of the department telling me to go slower or to move the page up and down, which I love. But I, I have no idea whether you guys are actually watching this as a show or whether you guys are working with me. And I hope, 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 hope you guys are working with me. I know your hands are cold, so so are mine. But let's do this, man. Let's be strong. Let's get this weird, weird um, year behind us. So get the turning point. That means you must go, what must I put in there to make this fall away? So hopefully you have done that now. Negative two. So if all of that now falls away, then what survives? 15 survives. Yay, if you have that. Good. Also remember now, because of that, what does it look like? Does it smile? Does it frown? Does it have a maximum? Does it have a minimum? Could you decide on that quickly? And it frowns. Now we must get the Y intercept. That means that you must make X zero. So I'm going to wait for you to do that, but I'm just going to repeat that. So you must make X zero and then calculate the value of that. So the Y intercept. So make X zero. And hopefully you will be able to get that. You don't even need a calculator for that. Practice your minds. We make X zero. That means we have two. Two to the power two, that's four. Four multiplied by minus three. Minus 12. And 15. Three. So these are the easy parts, but now comes the difficult part. So we now have to make Y zero. So I was told that I must let you do it. So I'm going to do that, but I want to just write it down. Remember I said we can read from ref, left to right or from right to left, makes no difference. So we have it like that now. So remember now you have to take that away you have to divide by that. You have to get the square root. And then you have to get rid of the plus two. And then you must have two values. Now that you can do in your calculator or you can do it on paper, depending on whether you want all the marks or whether you just want some of the marks, you know, three out of five, maybe. <clears throat> I'm going to have a drink of water quickly while you guys get that. And I am back. Now this one does not work out as well as the previous one, and I intended it to be like that. So is this what you guys did? Minus 15? Then did you divide minus 15 by minus 3? Which gives you Positive 5, don't make sign mistakes. Eh? Negative 15 divided by negative 3, that's positive. So now we must get the square root of that. Plus, minus. Is that what you did? 
And then you must get rid of the plus two, so minus two plus minus. The question paper will tell you how far to round off. Remember to always read the instructions right at the top of paper one when you start, even paper two. It will tell you to round off to two decimals. Sometimes the question says um, round off to one decimal, sometimes to three decimals or so. This one will be two decimals, so I'm not going to do it for you because you guys are too good for that. But you go minus two plus the square root of that is the one answer. And then minus two minus the square root of that is the other answer. And then you sketch it exactly the same way as the other one that we just had. Now, I remember way back when I was still young, uh, a girl asked me, um, I was teaching in Paro, what should I do to get very good marks? So I said to her, have you done the question a hundred times? Now, I know that's that's a lot. And I, I don't, didn't really mean it like that, but even the same question, you can do it 20 times and that's good for you. You can do this question, go and practice it, do it 20 times again and again and again until you know what the steps are exactly. Why? It sounds like a waste of time, but guys, I'm telling you now, there are more difficult questions in the paper, as you know, and if you can fly through these questions, you have much more time for the more difficult questions. So do yourself a favor, believe me, go do this exact question 10 times, the same thing, so that it becomes second nature and you can almost do it in your sleep. I hope you guys are coping, eh? because this is a long session, it's two hours. So now we know how to sketch the thing. But now the opposite is, if the sketch is given, how to get the equation? Ooh, I was so angry at my grade 12s because I asked them these questions in a test and they couldn't do that. Not because they're stupid, but because they never studied hard enough the grade 11 work. And you can only do this if you know your grade 11 work very well. So now this time the sketch is given and they ask you to get the equation and they are going to ask you this, I promise you. Now there are two cases. There are two cases. One is when the roots are given. The roots, what are roots again? The x values. The roots given, I will take my hand out of the way in a moment. When the roots are given. And the other one is when the turning point is given. when the roots are given and when the turning point is given. So I hope you guys are writing this down. I know you did this in grade 11, but you need to be able to do it again this year. I'll take out my hand away in a moment. Or for root. So that's not an exponent, eh? That just means this is one root and that's another root with a little a in front. So if they give you the roots, you must know this. This formula is not on the formula sheet. So you guys must know this. I hope you are writing it down if you don't have it. Then if the turning point is given, then it's that turning point thing that we've been using. And you can use any letters. It doesn't have to be a P. It doesn't have to be a Q. It can be any letters. This can be a minus. This can be a plus. doesn't matter. Anything. But these two formulas are very important for you to know, and they are not on the formula sheet. Okay, so guys, have you written them down? I hope you have. Now, let me just get my page. So I am going to ask all of you guys to copy that sketch now, please. This one, I'm going to call it number one. 
I hope you can see that. There's a minus one there, there's a four over there, and there's another 0.5 semicolon minus 12. Could you guys just copy that, please? Doesn't have to be neat. Just do it quickly, but just be accurate. Minus one is the one root, four is the other root, and then five minus 12. So I'm just going to make myself a small sketch of this on the, the other page. So I'm just going to take it away. You can see it just now again. So there we go. Minus one over there, four over there, five and minus 12 over there. So only my grade 12s that really studied for their test could do this. Most of them just left it out. Oh, I was not happy. So what is given now? Is the turning point given? No. The roots are given. That means this formula. Now remember now, this is not on the formula sheet. So you guys will have to know this. So X plus one x minus four. I hope I don't have to um, re-explain why it's now a plus one, why it's a minus four. Do I? Let me just take this page away quickly. Let's go to grade 10. Now we're in grade 10. Welcome grade 10s. If you have a question like that, how do you get the x values? Remember we say if something times something is zero, then this is zero, so that must be minus one, or this must be zero, then x is four. So then if we work backwards, then plus, then minus, and minus, then plus, for that reason. So minus one, plus one, plus four, minus four. So we're almost done, but there's still this thing over here that we need to get. And they will always give you another point. Always give you another point. And in this case, we have 5 and minus 12. So what to do? Well, we're just going to slot it in there. So we put the 5 where it belongs. It's an x value. So 5 must go there and there. And the minus 12 is a y. So the minus 12 must go there. So don't just watch me. Write it down, please. So 5 must go in there. 5 plus 1. 5 minus 4. So now we're back to grade 8. Yeah, I, I know it doesn't look like that, but it's a grade 8 question. So from that, we must now get the value of A. So can you guys do that quickly? So there's a 6, can you see? And there's a 1. So there's a 6. There's a 1. So just hang on, just stop quickly. Just follow my pen. Look at the sketch. This sketch looks like that. So what do we expect? This value over here, should this value be a positive number or should this value be a negative number? Well, it's a frown, it's a maximum value. So that has to be a negative number. So if, if you do your calculations and that is not a negative number, you know something is wrong. So hopefully it's a negative number. That's six. Can you guys see? Six A. And so we divide, so we get minus two. Yay. It's a negative number. Thank goodness for that. So let's put the minus two back where it belongs. You see, A is minus two. So follow my hand. A is minus two. There is it. So minus two x plus 1, x minus 4. There we have the equation of the parabola. Now, listen carefully now to what this old man is saying. If the question just says, get the equation of the parabola, you are done. But if the question says, you must write it in the standard form, 
then we must still do something. Now let's pretend the question says that you must write it in the standard form. That means that you will have to go and multiply that out. Can you guys do that quickly, please? That should take you not more than two minutes, maybe three. Quickly, please. Quickly, quickly, quickly. So we get x squared, we get minus 3x, and we get minus 4. I hope you have that correct. And there's one thing more, and that is to take the negative 2 in as grade 8. So do that quickly, please. Negative 2 times that, you know, negative 2 times that, negative 2 times that. Don't make sign mistakes. You're too good for that. So negative 2x squared positive 6x, positive 8, plus 8. Now it's in standard form, and that sign over there is a negative, which it's supposed to be because it goes like that. Can you see? And we're happy, and it's full marks, and my grade 12 did not study. So, ooh. Uh, sorry, um, Mr. Schutz, uh, yes. Fergus Eifert speaking. I, I'm, un, I, I'm not sure whether you are sharing something. Okay, there it comes back just now. Oh, I just moved it, sorry. Okay, no Thank problem. You. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm so glad that the teachers are telling me because sometimes I get so excited over here and then I move my pages up and down and you guys can't see that. So the roots were given and we went through all the work and then I'm just going to move the other page and then there's the answer. So now we have that. So, Anton, yes. maybe they can try the example five on their notes now. It's, it's similar, so just to give them some repetition, um, if it's possible. Uh, Elaine, if I may, if the learners feel comfortable enough to share their work, they can take a picture and send it to us on the WhatsApp line. Um, I shared it in the chat, so the number is 021. Uh, nine three eight three zero five nine and then I can share that also. Okay, great twelves. I want you to do this one now, please. You can do the ones on your notes on your own later on when I'm not with you. So copy that sketch please. Zero over here, six over there. This one was chosen specifically because some people struggle with this one over here. So copy that quickly, please. As I always say to my grade 12, it doesn't have to be neat, it has to be correct. So eight semicolon 16 over there. Okay, so if you guys study and you work hard, then you will know how to do this. So what are given? What's given? The, the turning point's not given, eh? The roots are given. So I am going to, I was just told that I should give you guys a chance to do that for repetition. And I think that's a very good idea. It's easier when you are teaching a class and you can see what's going on, but I have no idea what's going on. So I'm just talking to myself here, except for the voices that are coming down, which I, I'm so grateful for. So grade 12, remember now your A value should be a what? A positive A because of this smile. So let's see how far you can go. This is always the hardest for me to, to shut up while the learners are working because I want to help. So I have like a, a, a naughty corner in my class where I go stand behind my door so that I can't help them. See, great, well, so that's the part I was talking about. Can you see the one root is zero, the other root is six? Okay, now I'm going to just sit here and pretend I'm watching you. So now I must put the eight in where it belongs. 
and you must put the 16 where it belongs and get the A. The A has to be a positive number if you look at the sketch. So I'm hoping you guys are putting the 16 where it belongs and the 8 where it belongs. Now this becomes a great 8 question. And I'm hoping that you guys are getting that A is positive 1 because that's also 16. Some of my learners sometimes say that is 10. But remember, we're multiplying at 16. So 16 divided by 16 is 1. Is that what you guys are getting? Why am I not writing the zero over there? Because I don't have to. Zero is nothing. And the only thing you still have to do is to get this in standard form. So remove the brackets, multiply up. I can see my time is now halfway. I'm going much, much slower than I anticipated. But maybe it's good. So this equation will be x squared minus 6x. Hey, where did the, this value go? Why is that zero? Can you guys see the y-intercept is zero? Anyway, I'm sure you knew that. Now we must look at the other one, where the turning point is given. So I'm asking you guys to, as fast as you can, to copy the sketch, please. So there's the turning point, 2 minus 4, and then another point. Like that. So you guys have more to practice if you use your notes then you can now use my notes to help you, and then you can practice the notes that the Department of Education has given you. Okay, so copy that one if you haven't yet, please, but be fast. So guys, can you see the turning point is given? The turning point is given. I'm going to say the third time, the turning point is given. So it's the formula which is not on the formula sheet. like that. I just made a mistake over here. <clears throat> the first thing is to put the turning point in. Now, let's just go back one step. Can you see the blank page? If I have that, then what's the turning point? Two. Can you see? Two must go in there to make that negative. And then all of that falls away. And then three. If I make that, don't look away. Don't look away. If I have it like that, then what's the turning point? 
that part I know, this part, what must I put in there? The opposite of that, what I see. So minus three. So keep that in mind, okay? That's positive two. That means I must have minus two. How do we check that? This is how we check that. If you put the two back in there, then this must be zero. You see, if you make this plus two, and you put the two in there, then you get four, not zero. Now it looks like that. Okay, so it's very similar to the one where the roots are given. Where the roots are given, we put in the roots first, and then we must get the A value. Now the turning point is given, so now we put in the turning point first, and now we must get the A value. Same as the other one. The only way to get the A value is to use a point on the graph which we have not used before. And of course it's 4 and 8. We have not used 4 and 8 before. So put the 4 where it belongs. Put the 8 where it belongs. Do it please. Now it looks like that. Remember the 8 is a y value, so it goes in here, and the 4 is an x value, so that it goes in there. Many, many, many learners make mistakes over here, and that's because they forget about bod mass. Bod mass is king, bod mass rules forever, until the day you stop doing mathematics, then you're free from bod mass. So can you calculate this value for A, please? Let's see if you make the same mistakes that my learners do. Please don't do, just watch me, but do it. Yo, I want to see you guys doing this. I want to see you guys writing. I want to see you guys smiling. So 4 minus 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So that's a 4. Now, what do you guys think the mistake is that my learners make? Yeah, they go four minus four. But of course you can't because you know bod mass. So that minus four goes there. So that's 12. And then we have four A over here. So A is three. Yes. Let's just check quickly. This thing is smiling, so the A must be positive. Is A positive? Yes, A is positive. But we're not done yet. The question never said get A. The question said get the equation of the parabola. Okay, so we need to still answer the question. So let's put the three, where are you? There you are. There you are. So we need to put the three where it belongs. There. Then we have that. And then we have that. I always say to my learners, a good mathematician is sometimes also a lazy mathematician, in a good way, I mean. If the question says, get the equation of the parabola, you're done, and you move on to the next. But if the question says that you must get this in the standard form, uh, then we still have to do that. Okay. Can you guys do that quickly? When I say in the standard form, it means you must multiply that out. Then take the 3 in, and then add the minus 4 to that. So I'm going to wait for you guys to do that as fast as you can. Fast, 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 fast. Now don't make a silly mistake over here. Don't say x squared plus 4. It must be x, it must be a trinomial. Almost, I, I almost give, gave you the answer. Don't make a mistake over there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. X squared minus 4x plus 4. Yay. So now you need to take the 3 in. Let's do that quickly. 
Don't just watch me, do it with me, or do it ahead of me. Plus 12. Now we're ready to give them the answer. And I always say to my grade 12s, grade 12, I'm going to lie to you now. Then they smile. I say, when you have the answer, you have to put a block around it. It's not true, of course, but it makes it very easy for the marker at the end of the year to find your answer. So 3x squared minus 12x and then 12 minus 4, so plus 8. Easy peasy, but now it's your turn. So. I hope you guys can see this one. Can you copy that quickly, please? Just in case you can't see, I'll just read it for you as well. That's minus one, four. So the turning point is given. And then that's four and minus 12. So just copy it fast, 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 please. It doesn't have to be neat. I'm sure when you guys are in grade 12, you're already used to writing down things very fast. So if you think you know what to do, get going. Don't wait for me. I'm just making myself another little sketch of the same thing so that we're all working on the same exact page. So there it is again, ugly, but correct. So the turning point is given. Like that. Yeah. OK, now let's see if you remember what I just said and what your teacher told you in grade 11. Now put the turning point in, please. Don't make sign mistakes. Don't make sign mistakes now. Uh, Mr. Schutz, yes. while we have some time for the learners to do the activity, yeah. um, tell me something. Do you have the AVA software installed on your computer? The what software? The AVA software that goes with the visualizer, the one that says Sphere 2 or something like that. Um, I don't think so. OK, no. just checking because that would improve the quality a little bit. Oh. Uh, we have some of the the schools that has some difficulty um, with the quality of oh. the, the the camera that keeps dipping uh, or goes away and comes back. And I'm experiencing the same thing. Oh, that's uh, um, that's 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 why I'm asking if you have that software installed, and then we oh, can no. maybe get it a little bit clearer. Maybe I can do that then for Thursday. Yes, sir. Or maybe is it is it the fact that I'm using a blue pen or should I use a Koki instead, do you think? Um or I both. think a Koki I th I think a Koki would look a bit better. Yeah. Um seeing that it's much darker, but if you keep the page like completely still and then the picture comes, but it comes and it goes oh, every I keep time. On and I'm I'm yes, and I'm in a different session now with a maths alert, and that person is using um the software um and sharing their desktop and then the picture quality is much clearer than what we are experiencing currently oh. but we can work on that for for thursday session thank you so much for that no problem thank you okay great 12s i'm learning a lot as we go on being an, an old man you know i also have to learn many many new things which you guys can teach me i'm sure so i'm i'm hoping that by now you have put in the turning point so i must hold my page still i'm going to use a, a black pen now and see if that's a little bit clearer now what i was saying just now is don't make some mistakes hey? so that must be x plus one and then plus four If you have that, yay. So now we must get the A value. That means that you must 
substitute the point 0.4 minus 12. So put the 4 where it belongs, that's in the place of the x. Put the minus 12 where it belongs, that's in the place of the y. And then get the a from that. While you're doing that, keep in mind that because of the shape, the a will have to be a negative number. Now, whether a is a fraction or a whole number makes no difference, but a has to be a negative number. So I just put in the 4 where it belongs and the minus 12 where it belongs. Now we're not going to make bot mass mistakes. So that's 5. So 5 to the power 2, that's not 10. Eh? Many, many people make that mistake. 5 to the power, that's 25. Now it looks like that. This one is going to have an ugly looking answer, but that's okay. We're not scared of that. So that goes over, so that's minus 16. Like that. Oh my word, and now we have to, <clears throat> sorry, we have to divide. So minus 16 over 25 is 8. Yeah, and I wanted it to be to be like that. So we're not worried about the fact that it's a fraction. What is important is the sign. Because of the shape, it has to be a negative. So let's finish this thing off. Let's find you. Where are you? Okay, there you are. Ugly looking thing, this. So once again, if they simply ask you to get the equation, you have the equation and then you stop. But if they say write it in simplest form or in the standard form, or they go AX squared plus BX plus C, unfortunately you will have to do this. But we're not scared of fractions. So I was told to hold my page still a little bit because I keep on moving, but I'm also learning as we go on, but now I have to move it a little bit. I hope you guys can see that. So I'll multiply that out. So I hope all of you are going to work with calculators because you can't work without a calculator, not in the age that we are living in with technology. You know, so we have to multiply that in, that in, that in, and then add the four to that. But let's not waste your time on that. You guys can finish that on your own. I have a calculator here next to me, but I don't want to waste your time. So these are the two basic things about the parabola, how to sketch it and how to get the equation. Yes, they ask many questions, but one step at a time. Just make a note to yourself there, if I'm going too fast, that this is not done. You still have to multiply that in. And then you must have three terms because you must still add the four. But on the WCED, the Department of Education notes, you will find good explanations of all of this uh, with different examples. And there's also a memo at the back, I'm sure, where you can check your answers. Okay, guys, that's the hyperbola, not the hyperbola, the parabola for now. So I am going to start now, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to change my own story here a little bit by asking us to look at the hyperbola now. So if you guys could please write down hyperbola. Some people say hyperbola, but it's hyperbola. And the first thing that you have to be able to do is to sketch them. 
So just write down hyperbola. So I am going to write down this one. I hope you guys can see that, and I'm hoping that you write it down immediately as you see it. So can we go, go back to the first five minutes of this lesson? How would we know it's hyperbola? Is there to the power two? No, so it can't be a parabola. Is there to the power x? No, so it can't be an exponential graph. But the unknown is below the constant. Can you see the unknown is below the constant? So it must be a hyperbola. So for the hyperbola, it's either going to look like that, you know, or it's going to have that shape. Which you probably remember from grade 10 as well. So this is a recipe, guys. This is a recipe. And if you want to write down notes for yourself, here is the first note to write down. Put the asymptotes down first. Put the asymptotes down first. So the, I, I don't have time to go through all of this, so I'm just going to repeat that. This is the one asymptote, y equals four. And do yourself a favor, write y equals four. So that if they ask you for the equation of the asymptote, you already have it. And then the other one is the opposite again. Now, the reason why that is positive one, that will take a whole lesson to explain. So x equals one. Now do yourself an immense favor by writing down the coordinates of this new I call it the origin. It's not the really the origin, but you know the origin, we, we learned it in grade eight first, I think maybe even grade seven, which was zero, zero, but we now have a new origin. It's now one and four. Make a fat dot over there. It's going to help you a lot later on when they ask you questions such as um, the, what are the lines of symmetry and so on. So do yourself a huge favor. Now, just to go back to grade 10, I don't know if you guys remember, let me just grab another page here. Hope you guys can see I'm moving a lot. If that's a positive, do you remember that it's in quadrant one and quadrant three? One, two, three, four, quadrant one and three. So that is positive, so it must be in quadrant one and quadrant three, but we now have new quadrants. So there is quadrant one, can you see? So it must be there. Now the other one is more difficult to sketch. This is quadrant three, can you see? So now the question is, does it go through the origin, the old origin? Does it go above the old origin? Or does it go below the old origin? That's very important. So we need to determine that first before I sketch the thing. How do I do that? Well, on the Y line, U is zero, X is zero. So make X zero in there. Make X zero in there. Have you made it zero? So then you have four divided by minus one. That's minus four. Plus four. That's zero. Oh, that means it goes through the origin. That's a bad sketch. It's supposed to go closer and closer there. It's supposed to go closer and closer there, but not touch. Can you see how I determined 
whether it goes above the origin, through the origin, or below the origin. One can also say, calculate the y-intercept. That You can also call it that. Calculate the y-intercept. And to calculate the y-intercept, we make x naught. So we make x zero. We make x zero. Then we have four divided by minus one, that's minus four. And then minus four and four, that's zero. So we have zero, zero, so it goes through there. And there's the sketch. And that's full marks. Can you guys see? So we have the one asymptote, we have the other asymptote, we have the correct shape, we have the correct quadrants, and then we must also always give a, a point, some point on it, but we have one. So zero, zero. Let's do another one like that, but this time I'm going to ask you guys to do it. And then I'll come off to you and then help you with that. So I am going to write down minus two over there. Like that. So once again, how do we know it's a hyperbola? Because the unknown is below the constant. There's the constant, there is the unknown, it's below the constant. So it must be hyperbola. So let's decide on the shape quickly. That is a negative, which means it's going to look like that. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to please put in the two asymptotes. If you don't mind, use dotted lines for that. Are you doing it? I hope you are. I have just more than 30 minutes left. I'm not going to get close to what I intended to, but that's okay. One step at a time. So the y-intercept is what you see. You know that old saying, what you see is what you get. So y equals minus 2. And the x1 is almost like what, what you see is not what you get. It's the opposite of what you see, so it's minus 2. Now, if you have it like that, you already have two marks. Even if you don't have time or you don't know how to carry on, you already have two marks. Now, do yourself a favor by writing down the coordinates of the new um, origin. I call it the new origin. Minus two. Minus two. Make it a nice fat dot so you can see it clearly. You will need it either with me on Thursday or later on with someone else, but you will need it. Okay, so we have now decided that it looks like we said it looks like. So there is quadrant two. So it will have to go like that. And it will have to be in quadrant four. So it will have to go like that. Now, most people know how to do this, but now comes a, a tough, a tough, 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 tough task. The question paper will say right at the beginning or just above this, it will say that you must give the coordinates of all intercepts with axes. That means in simple English, you must tell them what that is. And you must tell them what that is. Because it goes through the x axis there. So we have to put, we have to give that point, the x intercept, if we want to call it that. And it goes through the y axis over here. So we will have to give that point, which is called the y intercept. Now, do you guys remember that if you are on the x axis, y is zero. And if you are on the y axis, x is zero. Well done, if you knew that. 
Yeah, now I need to give you, but I can't give you more than four minutes, guys. See if you can, let's do this one first, because it's easier. Just follow my hand and my pen over here. So X is zero. I'm just moving the page a little bit. So X is zero. So take zero, put it in there. So that falls away. Then do this calculation and the Y value that you get, you're right over there. Can you guys do that quickly, please? So we take zero, we put it in there, so that's gone. So negative two divided by positive two, that's negative one minus two, so that's minus three. Okay, that was the easier one. Now the more difficult one. Now we have to make this zero. So you may have to make y zero. So I must now decide whether I want to use a new page for that or not. I'm, I think I'm going to force it in here. So zero equals. Now it looks like that. Now you guys must decide, and I, I'm sure many teachers won't like what I'm going to say now. It's one mark. So if you have time to go through all this work to get that one value there, then do it. But if you're running out of time, just leave it and go on to the next. Because it's full marks already, minus one mark for not showing that. You understand what I'm saying, I hope? Because I'm also maybe talking too fast. But if you have time and if you are blessed with the talent to do mathematics, and I'm sure the good Lord has blessed many of you to do mathematics. Like some of you can run fast, some of you can dance well, some of you can sing nicely, you know, these are all talents that you were born with. If you were born with the talent to do mathematics, well, let's then get that point. There are many ways of getting it. I think this might be the easiest. So let's take the minus two and move it over. You know, like that, minus two goes there. Now we have that. So if you don't mind, I know the page is going to move now, but I just want to rewrite it over here because I need more space. So we have a two over there, a minus two over there, and an X plus two over there. So we have to get the X. And all this work we need to do for one mark. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? It all depends on the time you have available. So the opposite of divide is times. So now it looks like that. Then the opposite of times two is divide by two. So minus two divided by two, minus one. And then the opposite of plus two is minus two, so it's minus three. minus three. Yeah, see, you have to decide whether you think it's worth the time to give that, that one value or not. Okay. I'm not changing my planned story because I think you guys need to practice one of these. So I'm going to write it quickly. ask you to copy that. It's not the same as the one that we did, even though you might think it is. See, there's a difference over there. Copy it quickly, please. So we have 30 minutes left now. Decide on the shape.
So hopefully by now you've decided on the shape. <clears throat> now put the dots in, the dotted lines, the asymptotes. That's already two good marks if you can do that, even though you might not have time to, to complete the rest of the sketch. Are you doing that? It's all quiet. I wish I could see you guys working. Dot, 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 dot. Y equals four. This one is the opposite. Dot, 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 dot. X equals minus one. Now write down the coordinates of the new origin. It's valuable. I promise you it's valuable. How fast are you? Have you written that? Minus one, four. Okay, now sketch the thing. It's positive, right? So it's supposed to look like that and like that. So quadrant one, which is a new quadrant one, and quadrant three, which is now a new quadrant three. Don't be scared to make mistakes. We all make mistakes in life. The thing is that if we make mistakes, then we go back and we fix them. So there is quadrant one now. So we sketch it like that. And there's the new quadrant three. So we sketch it like that. Now, if you don't have time when you're writing exams, you leave it like that, you move on to the next question. But if you have time, <clears throat> then you must get that point and you must get that point. Let's do the easy one first. Have you done it? I'm keeping quiet, so I'm hoping you're working ahead of me. This is the easy one, because on this line, X is naught. On that line, Y is naught. So we make X zero, naught, zero. So four divided by one, that's four, and another four, that's eight. <coughs> Sorry about that, that's easy peasy. Now the other one is the more difficult one. So leave it out, move on to the next question, but not today. Today we're all going to do it. So you can see it's on this side, so it has to be a negative number anyway. It's on the X axis, so we have to make Y zero. Okay, so let me Keep my mouth shut a little bit and let's see how good you guys are. Can you guys get that X value quickly, please? So hopefully by now you've taken that over unmathematical what I'm saying don't take it over but we all speak like that plus four so it becomes minus four I'm just going to move the page sorry about that divide by becomes times that looks like that get rid of the minus four that means we have to divide it away so 4 divided by minus 4, minus 1, and then we have to get rid of the plus 1. So plus 1, you go over, you become minus 1, so minus 2. 
So the A wave minus two, and that will give you full marks for this question. Now, of course, the opposite they also love asking, and that is when they give you the sketch, and then you have to get the equation from that. So now you guys will have to be fast. I am going to be quiet and I'm going to ask you to copy number A quickly, please. That's four zero in case you can't see. That's X equals two and that is Y equals minus three. Copy number A, please. As fast as you can, it doesn't have to be neat. Just make sure you have the correct values. You know the four zero and then the y equals minus three and the x equals two. Okay, so I'm hoping that by now you have. You can see it's a it's a hyperbola. So we have to get the equation. <clears throat> Here's the very important note. When you write down or when you are to get the equation of the hyperbola, always put in the asymptotes first. That's plus two, so that's minus two. Remember, with the x, it's not what you see is what you get, but with the y value, what you see is what you get. Put the asymptotes in first. So y equals minus 3 over here. That one is plus 2, minus 2. There are only two steps. That's the one step. The second step is to get the constant. Now, if you look at the shape, the constant has to be a positive number. So if you do your calculations now and you get a negative number, you're not going to go, ah, bad luck. You know there's a mistake. And you have to go back and fix that mistake. And it will be a sign mistake. It will be a silly sign mistake. So how do we get K? Well, we need to have a value that goes in the place of X and the value that goes into the place of y. You know, you can't use the asymptotes. Why not? Because the asymptotes are not on the sketch. Can you see? The graph does not touch the asymptotes. So you have to use a point which is actually on the graph. And there's only one at this stage, and that's four zero. So put the four where it belongs. and put the zero where it belongs. That's a Y value. And now this has become a great eight question. Now we can get K from that. Let's see what we have. That's four minus two. So that's K over two minus three. That's what we have. We must get K. Yeah, let's think what's the easiest way. I think let's move the minus three over. Yeah, now it looks like that. Now we still have to get rid of the 2. So we all know that divide by 2 becomes times by 2. That means that k is 6. But now don't make the mistake that many of my learners make. You don't stop there. The question was not get k, the question was get the equation. <clears throat> So it must be that you put the six in there. Can you see? That is the answer. 
this is very easy. So now we have just more than 15 minutes. I'm now going to ask you guys to copy number B as fast as you can, please. Just in case you can't see, but you can multitask, okay? So you can work while you're listening to me. That is Y equals four. That is Y equals minus one. But where's the other point? We need another point. Ah, we have another point. It goes through zero, zero. So copy the sketch, please. Some of you will be very fast. I know that from my own experience. As soon as you've copied the sketch, then start by getting the equation, but the K you don't have, so keep K as K or any other letter, any other letter of your choice. But a lot of people use K. Now put the asymptotes in first. Don't, don't make a mistake now with the X, please. Don't make a mistake with the X. So hopefully by now you've copied the sketch. You've managed to write down y equals four, x equals minus one. You can see it goes through the origin. If you one of the fast workers, run ahead of me. Don't wait for me. I'm slow. Put in the asymptotes. The y is what you see is what you get. And the x, what you see is not what you get. Minus one, plus one. If you knew that, well done. Now you still have to get the K. To get the K, you need a point which is on the sketch. You have one, it's zero, zero. So put the zero, zero in, substitute it into X and Y, and get the K from that. Just hang on. Should K be a positive number or should K be a negative number? If you look at the shape of the graph, k should be a negative number. So if you get a negative number, well done. If not, then it means you've made a sign mistake and you're going to go fix it quickly. So we substitute it like that. 0 into x, 0 into y, because it goes through the origin. Let's just simplify this thing and make it a great 8 question. So we have k over 1 plus 4. Ah, that's too easy for us. Minus 4 equals k. That's too easy for us. Yes. So that means, and I'm going to just do it here, but don't do it like that in exams, please be neat. But that value is now minus four. And this thing that I'm circling, that's the answer. So that is the answer. That is the equation to this very nice looking hyperbola. Now you guys need to practice that a lot. You can do these two again and again and again. It would be good if you could do them and not be lazy and go to the notes that you received and work through them as well. You guys must be tired by now, but be strong. In the last 15 minutes, let's just start with the exponential one. So if you guys have a new page. I don't know what you are writing on in books or on folio. I'm just going to abbreviate that the exponential graph. It's not an easy one. Especially, I don't know how far your school is. If your school has already done the inverse of the graphs, the inverse of the functions, and the logs, <clears throat> I don't know if you've done that. But let's just go through the basics again.
So could you guys please write down y equals 2 to the power of x? Now, in the first five minutes of this lesson, I said that's how we know it's exponential if it's to the power of x. So that's exponential. But now the thing about this is it can have so many shapes. So what I do with my class, I make them go like this. So could you guys also do that now, please? So big, big, big line like that. So over here, could you please write y equals 2 to the power of x? And then a very small Cartesian plane over there. 